Finally, the kicker light gives the added professional touch. Five or six lights are recommended and should cover almost any lighting situation. Now let's turn each light off in succession. Kicker. Separation. Background. Fill. And key. This diagram exhibits the placement of each light. The key light should face the subject. Notice the shadow under the subject's nose. The fill light should be near the camera lens. The background light is placed on the floor. The hair light is high and behind, as is the kicker light. In the next shot, notice the shadow of the subject's nose. This lighting pattern is a mark of professional lighting. Let's review again this lighting arrangement. Key. Fill. Now the background light. The separation light. And the kicker light. Compare the drastic difference between the image produced by the use of proper lighting equipment with that produced in normal room lighting. Not only is the effect more pleasing, but the actual recorded image is of higher quality when sufficient lighting equipment is used. Compare the difference. Now let's see how to improve outdoor taping. Many outdoor taping sessions may be greatly improved by the use of simple, inexpensive reflectors. This one was made by gluing ordinary kitchen aluminum foil on a piece of plywood. Dull side on one side of the plywood, shiny side on the other. A board painted white or silver will also work quite well, as will white or silver poster board. This video crew is using two aluminum foil reflectors, the dull-sided one on the model and the shiny-sided one on the background. There are several reflectors available commercially. This is the image produced by the aid of these two simple reflectors. Watch closely as each one is added or deleted from the scene. Out, in, out, in. In fact, this entire scene has been lighted by these reflectors. The direct sunlight has been shaded off by a third reflector. Notice the harsh contrast as it is removed. The split screen shows how the reflector may be angled to cast the light on the subject. Such reflectors may be used to improve almost any outdoor videotaping. Lenses and camera angles. This normal or 25 millimeter lens is the one most commonly found on video cameras. Prices may range from under $25 to several hundred depending on the quality. This is a 15 millimeter high quality wide angle lens. It is normally found on a 16 millimeter motion picture camera. The 15 millimeter lens may be focused as near as six inches from the subject without any additional accessories. Any lens that has a C thread mount may be used on a video camera. This is an extremely wide angle lens, 5.7 millimeter, of very high quality that may be needed by very few VTR users, but is nonetheless very valuable for covering wide areas from a very short distance. Here is a zoom lens that covers a range from 16 to 64 millimeters and is common to many VTR cameras. 
This extreme telephoto zoom lens covers a range of 140 to 460 millimeters and was designed for 35 millimeter cameras. A C-mount adapter has been added allowing its use on a videotape camera. Now let's examine and compare the effects of some of these lenses on the video image. This office scene is being photographed with a 25 millimeter normal lens at a distance of about 15 feet. This is the angle of view covered by a 15 millimeter wide angle lens at the same camera distance, a slightly wider angle than is seen by the human eye. This is the 5.7 millimeter extreme wide angle lens with a built-in filter holder and a removable lens shade. It's obvious why it's called an extreme wide angle lens. This view is from the same camera distance of 15 feet. A comparison of the angle of view of a 15 millimeter wide angle lens with that of the 5.7 millimeter extreme wide angle lens. Quite a difference. The zoom lens, of course, offers the advantage of a wide angle, continuously variable to telephoto, like having an infinite number of focal lengths in a single lens. While the zoom lens shot on the left produces a pleasing portrait, the 5.7 millimeter lens causes grotesque distortion. The lens itself does not cause the distortion, but rather the close distance from the subject necessary to fill the screen. The wide-angle lens serves many useful purposes, but photographing people is not one of them. The movable parts of the zoom lens are the aperture, diaphragm or f-stop ring used to control the amount of light entering the lens and the depth of focus at a given f-stop. The second ring controls the zoom or focal length of the lens from wide angle to telephoto. The zoom ring may be used to select desired composition with a minimum of camera movement, or it may be changed continually during a shot to give the effect that the camera is moving closer to or farther from the subject. The ring furthest from the camera controls the focus of the lens and is usually marked in both meters and feet. It may be pre-focused by measuring the distance to the subject and setting the corresponding footage opposite the engraved line. The knurled ring is used to facilitate focusing the zoom lens. This split screen shot shows the actual effect achieved as the lens is zoomed from wide angle to telephoto. Never attempt to focus a zoom lens at the wide angle position. It is impossible to determine focus accurately. While it may appear sharp at the wide angle setting, the inaccuracy of the focus becomes apparent as soon as the zoom is changed to telephoto. Always focus the zoom lens at the telephoto setting. Then the zoom may be changed from telephoto to wide angle and back while maintaining sharp focus throughout the zoom range of the lens. Remember, when using a zoom lens, always focus at the longest focal length or telephoto position. Deciding when to zoom is a matter of personal taste. However, it should be used with discretion and only when it has a purpose or enhances the visual effect of the shot. It should not be moved in and out merely because it is available. Use the zoom to enhance an otherwise static shot. This is the 15 millimeter close focusing lens and the amazingly detailed shot it is capable of producing. The subject of this shot, a zoom lens, was photographed at a distance of only six inches. 
close-up or dioptar lenses may be purchased for any video camera lens to extend its close focusing range. They are very inexpensive and easily adapted in a few minutes. This shot shows the visual effect of stopping down the f-stop under constant light conditions. The image becomes fainter and has less contrast as the diaphragm allows less and less light to enter the lens. In setting the f-stop, remember, closing the lens diaphragm decreases contrast, opening the lens diaphragm increases contrast. Increase contrast, more light. Decrease contrast, less light. This technique is called follow focus. By placing a piece of masking tape on the focusing scale, marking it at various points of the subject's position, a shot may be made while the subject is continuously changing distance and yet still maintain sharp focus. An assistant should change the focus as the subject approaches the pre-marked points. Here, our model demonstrates the stance most often used for panning or moving the camera horizontally standing behind the camera and merely turning it. Toward the end of the pan, she loses balance and the result is a jerky image. A professional technique to improve panning will be demonstrated shortly. In this shot, the model demonstrates the commonly used yet incorrect method of panning a handheld camera. Notice how she moves only the camera, her neck and wrists. The result is an unacceptable pan. Using the recommended technique for panning, the model starts the pan in the off-balance position and becomes more able to control the camera as the pan continues. Note the camera cable draped over her shoulder out of the way. The proper stance is of great importance in panning a handheld camera. Use the legs as a brace or natural tripod. Spread the feet apart and pan the whole body, pivoting from the knees. Practice the stance and the pan for each particular shot several times before actually taping it. Drape the camera cable in a loop to avoid becoming entangled or tripping over it. Brace the elbows against the body and use the whole body to absorb as much of the pan movement as possible. Handheld panning requires much practice to be effective. Use a tripod whenever possible. Editing with a non-editing machine. Sync-free editing of videotape without a special effects generator or electronic editing machine is impossible. Changing from one shot or sequence of shots to another may be done simply by recording one shot or sequence, placing the VTR function switch in the pause position, changing the sequence or shot, and then restarting the machine, recording the new sequence of material. This is the extent of non-editing machine capability. The result is unavoidable and annoying sync dropout lines between sequences. Watch closely. This type of sync loss is unavoidable. Another method of editing videotape is by physically cutting in or splicing the sequences together using the special splicing kits available. This must be done very carefully and is recommended only in cases of extreme necessity. Tape spliced in this manner may possibly damage the playback head of the video recorder and the resultant sync loss is just as apparent as in the stop start method demonstrated earlier. Watch closely. Scenes may be assembled in sequence, but uninterrupted editing is impossible without special electronic editing machines. Using more than one camera. Many VTR users may want to use more than one camera. Additional equipment required is a camera switcher that enables the image going into the recorder to be changed from one camera to the other, adding variety and interest to your videotapes. Using more than one camera requires more planning of shots and action. The cameras should be situated so that each may produce a drastically different image. One camera may be on a close-up of the subject from a frontal angle, while another shows a long shot from a side angle. 
Two, three, or four cameras may be used, but each should maintain an image different from the others. If one is on a close-up, the other should be on a long shot, and so on. This gives the director a variety of shots to choose from. When using more than one camera, it is recommended that there be some kind of communication device between the cameramen and the technical director. Sound-powered headsets are highly recommended. They provide two-way communication between all users and require no amplifiers or batteries. This enables the director to instruct each cameraman to produce the proper shot and will greatly enhance production efficiency and results. The special effects generator includes a multi-camera switcher, a fade-in, fade-out, dissolve control, provision for a negative image, switching for corner shots, and split screen or wipe effects. Let's watch some of these effects on the right-hand monitor. Dissolve. Dissolve. Negative image. Now a full screen dissolve. Another dissolve. A superimposure. And now a fade out. And finally, a split screen and wipe. Sound recording on videotape. This type of microphone is usually supplied with VTR equipment. This is a battery powered microphone with a built in windscreen. Its price is slightly higher, but it produces higher quality sound than the one normally supplied in VTR equipment. This tiny lavalier mic produces a studio quality sound even under the most unfavorable conditions. It is high in quality and price and is best for high quality recording under a variety of conditions. This is another example of the great many high quality mics available for any sound recording requirement. The tiny lavalier mic is the one recommended for the best recording results under the greatest variety of conditions. In non-professional equipment, a mini plug may be required to adapt the mic to the VTR. In this case, a step-down adapter will make the necessary size correction. At this point, consult your instruction manuals for the impedance of the microphone and recorder. An impedance mismatch can be disastrous to your sound recording. Stationary microphones will produce acceptable recordings as long as the speaker speaks directly into it. Should the speaker be involved in some activity and be forced to leave the microphone, the sound will become hollow, tend to boom, and possibly become totally unacceptable for recording. Background noise will also be recorded near the same volume presenting further interference. To this problem, the lavalier mic is the perfect answer. It's small and unobtrusive, and does not restrict the movement of the speaker. She's limited only by the length of the microphone cable. By looping the cord under a belt or running it beneath a coat, the possibility of becoming tangled or tripped is reduced. Sound quality and recording levels will remain the same. Any mic can become a lavalier by adding a piece of line and some tape. Many recording situations require the use of multiple mics. Here is an inexpensive four mic mixer well within the reach of the most limited budget. It is for use with high impedance microphones such as the first two shown in this sequence. Placement is of great importance. A sound phenomenon called multi-mic interference frequently occurs when two or more mics receiving a similar sound are connected to the same mixer. This diagram shows a microphone placement that would be likely to cause multi-microphone interference. Too many microphones can cause a number of sound recording problems that can be avoided. 
Here we see illustrated a more desirable arrangement for the placement of microphones in a multi-mic recording situation. This kind of arrangement could apply to a panel discussion or a musical group. Additional mics could be added for each couple of participants. A good rule of thumb to consider when using more than one mic is to place the microphones at least three times as far apart as either is from the user. When two microphones are used, place the heads of the mics apart as illustrated on the left. Dubbing sound over a pre-recorded tape can be achieved by construction of a simple recording booth. Styrofoam, old mattresses, or even a blanket placed around three sides of the speaker will reduce background noise and boom. Carpeting is used here. Place the mic above the speaker, no closer than eight inches, and tip the mic down slightly. Place the recorder in another room if cable length permits. Maintenance of video equipment. Many videotaping problems could be avoided by proper care of the videotape itself. It should be kept clean and away from heat and high humidity. Tape should always be returned to the cellophane bag and placed in the box in an upright position. Avoid touching the tape itself while handling the reels and be certain to use the same size reel for the take up and supply sides. Frequent cleaning of the heads on the video recorder is of prime importance for top performance. Always use the cleaning sticks and fluid supplied by the manufacturer. For best results, apply the fluid directly to the head cleaner and hold the rotary head gently. Remove the deposits by rubbing in an even back and forth horizontal motion. Never use a vertical motion. Proper cleaning produces better taping and greatly prolongs the life of the recorder. Preventive maintenance on the video recorder itself will also produce better quality recordings. The machine should be oiled according to the individual manufacturer's recommendations. Only those areas indicated by the instruction manual should be oiled at the suggested intervals. Proper lubrication is essential to long life and top quality performance for any video recorder. Minor troubleshooting can prevent missed taping sessions and avoid unneeded service calls. The connecting cables necessary in videotaping are one cause of failure. Be certain that each cable is properly connected to the correct terminal. If one piece of equipment does not function properly, check the other cables. They're all interrelated. It's good practice to have at least two spare cables of each kind needed for your particular equipment. Another frequent cause of failure is the mismatching of the mode or function switches on VTR equipment. Most video recorders will record from a live camera, another recorder, or a TV monitor. Be sure the switch matches the input source. Many video cameras may be connected by an external sync cable or RF coaxial cable. These function switches should also be checked for proper match. The monitor switch should match the input source from the air, a video recorder, or a live camera. If the equipment still does not perform, a major malfunction may be indicated. If additional equipment is available, it is suggested that other pieces of equipment be substituted into the non-functioning setup. First cables, recorders, monitor, and camera. If the equipment still does not function, call your nearest factory authorized service representative. Do not attempt to work on the equipment yourself. It voids the warranty and can be dangerous. This has been a Video Realities Educational Production.